I beseech the many gods. Oh, help us. Protect the one I love. And stay the evil forces who would keep us apart. It was told in the time of the pharaohs that Egypt was to be ruled by a great queen. And the image of her exquisite youth and beauty would remain forever on earth. The night began in deceptive quiet, in Thebes, and along the banks of the River Nile. On this night, two lovers planned to meet, a meeting that would affect their destiny and the destiny of Egypt. might have been born an owl, Tanit. Will you go to your bed? It's so late. I'm not sleepy. Your night wanderings will be your undoing. These walls have eyes and ears. Suppose the high priest hears of what you're doing. Suppose the guards or your tutor report to him. Priests, guards, tutors, high walls. Days and nights marked out with frightful precision. I'm sick of it all, Penipa. Quiet. I want to be free. Free to come and go like any other girl. But you are not like any other girl. I do understand, child, but please, please be careful. You're drowned. <laughs> if the guards don't kill you, the night cold will. But this is the last time. I have the boat. We can reach the sea and be out of Egypt. Oh, Thomas, I've dreamed of this moment. And now that it's at hand, I'm sick with fear. If you're caught, you'll surely be killed. And so will Ben. If I were to be separated from you, I should prefer to die. There are powerful forces set against any plan of ours. Then we must get away while we can. I'll get the boat. but not beyond the range of the crocodiles. Leave him to them.
child. Do you know why you have been brought here? I suspect the reason, Excellency. But I intended no sacrilege. You met in secret with a young man. You proclaimed your love for him. The gods demand punishment. However, your youth and special position command a degree of mercy. But he is young, too. What of him? The boy. Oh, yes. The sacred laws are clear. The penalty for heresy, sacrilege, willful disobedience is the same. Death. When will you let me pose for you? Dancers are not my speciality. But I would never tire. I could stand for you by the hour, by the day. It would take more than a day to capture you in stone, my little desert gypsy. <laughs> it's plain you know your subject well. Well, I should. My father was the prince's fencing master when we were both old enough to lift a hill. Yes, yes. But familiarity with the subject may not always be an asset. It's possible you portray Amanoff as too accurately. Accurately? The eyes. You know what the gossips say. The prince is cursed with madness. The prince is my friend. I depict him as I find him. There is a restlessness in every line of that work. There's a restlessness in the whole of Egypt. And it's dangerous. Oh, that's nothing, Master. Just a scratch. I want to talk to you. Come to my room. I'm sure she's beautiful. Hmm? And no doubt, she's worth a hundred such wounds as that. <laughs> Who is she? Well, all I know about her is that she's called Tanit, and since she was a child, she's been groomed for the temple. Then, isn't it obvious that powerful influences control her? Far too powerful for a young man like you. I love her, and she loves me. Well? If you must pit yourself against the high priest, there is only one man that can help you. The Pharaoh. Go to his son, Prince Amenophis. He's your friend. He can speak to his father. But Amenophis is... Amenophis is in the desert. He's leading his army against the Chaldeans. Find him. You don't seem to realize that your life is in danger. And if your tenet is ordained, no power on earth, not even the Pharaoh himself, and set aside the sacred rites. No, Merit, no. I go alone. It would be better if you took me with you. The desert is my home. I know the way. You stay here. A thousand trickeries lie before you. I must face them alone. Tumis, there is a well half a night's ride from the old gate. What do you want? You have no right to break into this house. We have come for the sculptor named Tumas. He's not here. We haven't seen the man. The crocodiles in the river may have got him. Search the house. He's gone. He's not an animal. He's a human being as you are. Look here, old man. You must have great faith in that one god you preach about. What's his name? Aton. Why not appeal to him? He'll care for their wounds. He succors our souls. I pray he'll have mercy on yours. Mercy on me? Am I in the need of the mercy of a mythical one god? Has one god the power to deflect the point of my dagger from your scrawny old neck? Attention, all of you!
What sort of control do you exercise that causes such a tempest here? My prince, these captives have become unbearable. They're a burden to our army. What would you do with them? Stake them here when we march. Let the sands bury them where they stand. Your Highness, you have defeated brave and honorable soldiers. They deserve the consideration. Perish in this man preaches. Give me the right to act in your behalf, my prince. Say the word, sire. The killing of these defenseless men would be a brutal act of cowardice and a confession of weakness on the part of the future ruler of Egypt. You plead for the lives of these men? What do you ask for yourself? Nothing. And you, have you no fear for yourself? You can destroy my body, yes. But my true destiny rests in the hands of a power greater than all the laws of Egypt, in the hands of Aton, the only true god. Your god gave you defeat. Our gods give us victory. There is no god but Aton, the sun god. All other gods are false. Enough! Nagel! I will assert my right. Not even the commander of the armies has the right to shield a heretic. Nagel! Brave one, let's test your courage with someone your own age. Throw your weapons! Tumus! <laughs> Tumus, my foolish friend. <laughs> You've challenged the bloodiest dagger in my ranks, eh? What brings you to the desert? I've come to enlist your aid. Well, come in and tell me about it. Remember, Nagor, I hold you responsible for the lives of these prisoners. Now, come in. You must be tired and hungry. What will you do with him? Will you not punish him? In religious matters, I'm without complete authority. If I were to punish every act of insubordination, I'd be a commander without an army. There was a time when you'd have had his head for a lesser offense. I'm an officer. You've changed. You think so? Well, times change, too, miss, and so do men. <laughs> come in. Go gaze at the stars for a while. I have a guest. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable, my friend. Are you as thirsty as always? Hmm? <laughs> now then, Tumas, you said you came to ask my help. Well, if you're in debt, your problem's solved. My purse is wide open. No, I'm not in debt, but I do need your help. It's pledged. What's your problem? I've... I've fallen in love. Wonderful. Do I know her? No, I, I don't think so. Her name is Tarnit. Tarnit? No, I'm sure I don't know anyone by that name. You're going to be married, I suppose. I'm an officer. That depends on you. Me? Unfortunately, there's a great obstacle that stands in our path. Tell me. We'll break it down. <sighs> Tarnit is under the protection of the high priest. I believe it's her destiny to be ordained a priestess. What a waste of beauty. You must help us. I want to, surely, my friend, but only the Pharaoh has the power to oppose the high priest. But surely you can intercede with your father. Look at my position, Tumas. I'm far from Thebes. My father's old and sick. All my communications to him pass through the hands of the high priest. Do you think Benekan would agree if I petition in your behalf? I'm a novice. You are our last hope. I want to help. I want to. Perhaps, perhaps when I return with my army into Thebes. But then it'll be too late for me and for Tanit. Your failure to act at once dooms us. Already Benekin has condemned me to death. Death? My friend, you torture me. The hour is late. My brain won't function. We must rest. Sleep, Tumas. Sleep, we'll talk again when the sun rises. Don't despair. A new day wears a new complexion. Sleep, Tumas. Sleep. Darn it. What are you doing out of bed at this late hour? My sleep is lost. My mind wanders. Do you want me to be nursing an invalid? The cold air will touch your bones.
sun has gone down five times since he left. And it may go down five times more before you meet again. Get back to bed or you'll be meeting him with a wet red nose. Don't throw the rest of the night away. Sleep. The caravans report sandstorms over the desert. Yes, and he's sure to come through with no loss. Are you all right? Yes. Yes, I'm all right. Forgive me, my friend. I might have killed you. It's all right. It must have been a, a bad dream. Dream? Dream, dream. Is there anything but bad dreams? Why do my gods twist my mind? Why do they distort my days and foul my nights with a suffocating stench of a thousand cadavers fallen on the field of battle? Why do they drive me to kill, to kill, to kill when all I want is peace? You need to rest. You need to sleep. Sleep? <laughs> sleep. Sleep is the spit on which the evil gods roast the prince. By heritage and the royal tradition, I'm their favorite son on earth, and yet they torture me beyond my endurance. And lifting up their hands. and woodland flourish. The birds of the air fly high in the heavens and move their wings in your praise. Your but what of him? The deep, and the what is the true source of his courage, his tranquility? Whose courage? You that Chaldean priest. He fears nothing. He has one God and he is comforted. You are torn, He's out there in the cold the night, yet he has an inner warmth that astounds me. are upon the earth. They touch the face of every man. You move high across heaven, but your steps count the day on earth. Hail, Amenophis, ruler of Egypt. What nonsense are you suggesting, old man? My father rules Egypt. Before the sun twice warms these sands, you will be proclaimed Pharaoh. If your prophecy is realized, you will ride with me to Thebes, a free man. They're palace guards. It looks like General Maillard. Egypt. It is my solemn duty to report that your father, the Pharaoh, has passed to the ranks of Egypt's immortals. How did my father die? Was he in pain? He died as he lived, my Pharaoh, in peace and with fortitude. I made a promise. Now it's time to keep it. I cannot accept freedom for me alone. Then accept it also for your men. Hail, Hail Pharaoh! I prefer tears for my father than cheers for me. Marib, you will select enough men to form an escort for my return to Thebes. When will my Pharaoh leave? With the second sunrise. The escort will be ready. I'm turning my command of the desert troops over to you, Marib. 
I'm honored, Majesty. Your Majesty. Has my new station already changed my face in the eyes of an old friend? I'm an office. Now and always. You were going to ask something. I was going to tell you something. I... I share your grief. Oh. Thank you, my friend. I recall you have a sorrow of your own. It's over now. You may return to Thebes with the palace guards. And you will carry with you the mandate of a new pharaoh, freeing you from interference in the pursuit of the girl you love. I'm an office that you should have a thought for me in this moment. Thank you. Where is your commander? I've nearly died without you. Let me look at you. Oh, but come, come, tell me what has happened. What news have you? Tell me everything. This document is notable as the first official order of the new pharaoh. <sighs> it means that we're free. Free. Now no one can touch us. Not even the high priest. Not even Benekin. Oh! Come, let us make plans, wild, wonderful plans. There's time enough for that. What do you mean? Seventy days, the traditional mourning for the dead pharaoh. We'll have to suffer it out. Somehow I'll survive. Seventy days of joyous torture. And then, the great moment. I'm a novice has promised to give our wedding feast. I'll burst with joy. Just think. Me, Tarnit, wife of the famous young sculptor, Tumult, mother of his children. His many children. <laughs> wife. Wonderful, modest little wife. Oh, Master, please. I can't think what she sees in you. You're so ugly. <laughs> Master, I owe you a lot for all that you've done for us and for making today possible. Yes, yes, but I'm the one who's anxious to meet her. I'm ready. Oh. Come on. Consecrated sword, the mandate of the great god Ammon shall be executed. shedding of this drop of blood, Tanit is a name forgotten. Tanit is no more. In her place rises a pure, chaste soul, fit for the destiny for which she has been prepared. From this day forth she shall be known as Nefertiti. Rise, Nefertiti. They've taken her. Calm yourself. The Pharaoh will be back soon. He'll help you to find her. I'll not wait. I'll go to the desert. I'll show the pharaoh how his authority is flouted in Thebes. He'll have every inch of Egypt searched. Get escaped to us! You must not tremble so. You should rejoice you are the most fortunate girl in all Egypt. I do not understand these strange rites. Am I now a priestess? No, my child. 
Your station is far loftier. You are now the betrothed of the realm, the future bride of Egypt. Betrothed? You will be married to Amenophis immediately upon his return from the desert. But this is not possible. Egypt will have a new pharaoh and a new queen. But Amenophis is too much friend. He would never permit anything so dishonorable. He gave his word. The needs of the state are never dishonorable. But Tumos has the Pharaoh's mandate. You dare ignore this. I have a prior mandate. Binding even upon the new Pharaoh. A mandate from the god Ammon. Sanctioned by the old Pharaoh before he died. And subscribed to by your father. But this is... Your signet, your seal. There is no longer any reason for secrecy between us. I can tell you now. I am your father. waited so long to tell me this. It was better so, my daughter. The intricacies of church and state are not easily comprehended by the young. Someday you will thank me. as did my great father, to the pursuit of your progress, your happiness, and your prosperity. Does Amenophis know that I am the girl he granted Tumos permission to marry? You are not the same girl. Tanit is dead. I'll inform Amenophis of his plot to violate his word, to dishonor his friend. That would give you no comfort. On the contrary, it would surely seal the doom of your young friend. Are you saying that you'd have Tumos killed if I speak? His life is in your hands, my daughter. Your silence is his salvation. I must have your solemn promise that no harm will come to Tumos. Have faith, my daughter. Come now. You must try to seem animated before the Pharaoh. Have we seen the end of the day's appointments? My head is splitting. Your high priest has a most important presentation to make. But first, I would like to register the objections of our priesthood to the presence of an alien priest so close to the throne of Egypt. The pharaoh is aware that few normal prerogatives will be left to him while he occupies the throne. But he retains the right to think for himself in purely personal matters. If I choose to be influenced by the philosophy of the one god at some future time, that is my concern. You said you have a presentation to make.
I have here a proclamation transmitted through the priesthood by the god Ammon, designating the maiden chosen to sit beside the new pharaoh on the throne of Egypt. Me there. Go as fast 
as you can. Hurry. Is he alive? I don't know. I'm afraid. Nefertiti, the most beautiful queen ever to grace the throne of Egypt. No, no, keep your seat. There are faces here that are strange to me. Where is the face of my dear friend Tumas? Dakim! Why was my friend not at the temple? Why is he not here for my wedding feast? His name, my pharaoh, was struck from the guest list. By whose order? By my order, my pharaoh. Why? I regret that my pharaoh poses such a question at this time. I had hoped to avoid the introduction of a sad note on this happy occasion. Tumas is dead. How did it happen? He was held at a desert post as punishment for an impulsive indiscretion. I ordered his release, but he escaped. A search party found his tunic sleeve. It was bloodstained. Apparently, he'd been attacked by some wild beast. That is the information I have received, my fellow.
You must go to bed. I cannot. Sleep is impossible until I know he is safe. What satisfaction does the queen get in humiliating her husband and insulting the pharaoh? I have no desire to hurt your feelings. But you have. I've stared into the blank face of the moon three nights while you languish here alone. I, I have not been well. You make a ravishing invalid. Much too healthy to be neglected. You must give me time. Time to adjust. You're frightened. Or is this merely part of the eternal game of womanly evasion? I am frightened. I've never been alone with a man like this. We're not alone now, my love. The minds of all the people of Egypt are centered here in the hopes of an heir to the throne. You know that. Oh, I cannot. Oh, I beg you, do not press me. I have no desire to hurt you. How considerate. Do you think your evasions can bring me pleasure? Is there a greater prize besides a throne a pharaoh must bestow on a queen for her favors? I would gladly vacate the throne for someone more submissive. I never wanted it. We have an obligation to our people. If you insist on the hardcore discharge of a contract, then that is what it will be. The last cold spasm of a passion that is dead. If that will satisfy your pride, take it. I know I've been cruel. Life is cruel. To me, you are the beautiful instrument that sharpens the diabolical humor of the gods. Look, it's Thomas. Oh, master. You promised you'd go to Amenovis. Yes, I tried. You did, didn't you? Well, you know, the pharaoh is not easy to reach when a high priest like Benekin blocks but the way. But what's the news of Tanit? What's happened to her? Oh, I must know. Oh, forget she? everything for the present and concentrate on getting well. What's that noise outside? Oh, another of these long, monotonous series of state displays. Long live the queen! Long live the queen! Long live the queen! Has Amanov is already taken a bride? And I'm seen.
to the Pharaoh. You lied to me. I believe the young man was dead. But apparently my informants were impulsive and their conclusions faulty. But you were eager, anxious to believe. I confess I regarded such a possibility as the elimination of a dangerous impediment in your present exalted position. I cannot admire such cold disregard for my personal feelings. <laughs> what are you thinking about? The Queen? The distance between us now is deserts, oceans, centuries. Come, drink with me. To the deserts, the oceans, and the centuries. Let us celebrate together, you and I. Together. How I've dreamed of it. We'll laugh at the past. <laughs> and we'll take all that the future has to give. Come, Mary, to us. To you and to me. Come on. It's late. Put them on. Huh. Come on. Come on. You have much work to do. I know. Behold, Master. A new Tumos, without memory and without sentiment, blown by the wind wherever chance dictates. Well, chance has dictated a royal commission. A royal commission for me? Yes, for you. You've been selected to do the statue, the statue of the queen. Yes, it's true. Why me? Why not you? You're the master. No, the commission is yours. Your selection is a tribute to me. I'm more than satisfied. But, but who selected me? Safer, the new priest. He suggested the statue. The queen named the artist. And the pharaoh readily agreed. Well, I don't know that I can accept. Oh, you can't refuse. It's a royal command. Don't you see what the queen is trying to do for you? Yes. Balm for a disturbed conscience. For whatever reason you may think. Don't you realize what it would mean to you? It would immediately lift you up to the heights of the master sculptors of Egypt. And your future will be assured. Why not? Why shouldn't I be as she is, an opportunist? Yes. I'll do it. I'll take advantage of this. Where's the other one? Everything you brought is over there. You are nervous. Come on, sit over here. You are nervous because the Queen will soon be here. The Queen is no different from any other subject I've ever done. Look over there. Yes, the light is good. Very good. I'm an office. Have you nothing to say to your old friend? My old friend? Thomas. Thomas. But someone told me that you were... Oh, you must forgive me, my friend. I'm not quite well. Too many pressures, you know. All the ceremonies drain my energies. 
I'm so happy to see you again. You look well. And you, you, you no, seem... No, no, no compliments. I see my face in every piece of silver in the palace. I don't like what I see. I don't... Ah, so you are... You're going to make a statue of my bride. Well, don't let me delay the work. Will I disturb if I watch? It would be an honor. Please, begin. If it would please my queen to sit here. If the queen will direct her gaze toward, toward my assistant, then we can begin. It seems to me you came to the desert during my very last campaign to enlist my aid for... What was it? I came to ask your help in my efforts to marry the girl that I loved. And I gave it? Of course, I must have. It was your first official order as fair. So it was. You told me she was very pretty, I remember. She was beautiful, so I thought. But beauty is not the quality that we artists depict. It lies deeper when it's real. Deeper than what is captured by the hammer and chisel or by the eye of a too trusting lover. My queen. So the marriage didn't take place? No, it didn't take place. Did you change your mind or did she? As I remember, it was she. Unfortunate. And, uh, what happened? Nothing. I was just a diversion for the moment. But time changes things for everyone. New attitudes, new opportunities. I, I'm afraid I'm, I'm not up to this ordeal this morning. I'm tired. After I rest, perhaps. It's true. Uh, broken romances are saddening. Why do I have a pose at all? I knew every shadow, every curve of her face. I could mold it from memory a thousand times. She still loves you. I could see it in her eyes. And I hate her for it. I could kill her. Merit. No, no. I, I want to go away. Back to my people in the desert. Where I can forget everything about Thebes. But you won't. We all love the Pharaoh, but our ancient gods are supreme. Amenophis is cursed by the gods. He is no longer fit to rule. You, you too will feel the wrath of the gods if you submit without... The priests are very busy this morning. To the rule of a heretic. Something in the air. I had placed great reliance on my relationship with the queen. But I must confess that my influence, my efforts of gentle persuasion have availed me little. The cold reality, my brothers, is that our priesthood is faced with possible extinction. Does His Excellency have a plan of action? I have, much as I deplore violence, an incident must be created to bring the Pharaoh and the Queen to their senses. the Queen's permission.
Perhaps the Queen would prefer to end today's session. Oh, Tumus. Tumus, why do you hate me so? I had no control over what happened. You have everything that an ambitious girl would want. As for me, there is my work. You have nothing that I want. I've never stopped loving you for an instant. But you're the queen. You're married with my friend. There is no marriage. I have not deceived him. But I am not a wife to Amenophis. What are you saying? There's a legal bond between you. I, I will never stop loving you. As long as I live. Oh, please. Please, Tomas, try to understand. At least don't hate me. I... I can't bear it. <sighs> I'm in office. We'll be here soon to view the finished work. Yes, it's finished. It's the end of my work here. Darn it. I... I must leave. I, I must go away. But wh what are you saying? I must go out of Egypt. Oh, no, no. I will never let you go. I will never let you go. Madness. If there were one witness, an eye in the wall, you know what could happen to you. Now it is you who are in danger, and I cannot bear it. I will not listen to this. Oh, there, there must be something we can do. I must leave. Amenophis should know. Poor Amenophis. He knows little of what transpires beyond his own inner world. It's dangerous. The risk I take is the measure of how desperately I wanted to see you. Once more. Before you, Aton, you, O oh living star, wellspring of life, Shadows take flight, and men come forth rejoicing and lifting up their hands to heaven in your praise. Light the world and warm the hearts 
of your children, O oh omnipotent sun god. Ah! Ah! How did you get in here? From the crypt. There's a passage to the royal gardens. No wounds. I've never been so frightened. I thought that that would be our last moment. But I was happy that we should spend it together. Come, the palace is already in alarm. You must go. It. Dark days lie ahead. That incident in the temple was only a, a prelude. There is worse to come. And now, without safer, Amenophis will lose his grip on the throne. Darling, why don't we run away, out of Egypt, together, to where we can live as we had planned? It's a lovely dream, my dearest. But how could it be fulfilled? You are not bound in your heart to the throne or to the pharaoh. There is no just claim upon you. I will take any risk as long as I can be with you. I express the sentiments of my priesthood in deploring the tragic excess that cost the lives of so many worshippers here. But I would be remiss in my duty to the throne if I failed to mention the significance of this spontaneous outburst on the part of the people of Thebes. brutally martyred, a gentle, saintly man who was so great a comfort to me. And in his name, in the name of my beloved Saper, I now proclaim the worship of one God and the new religion. I decree the destruction of all idols and all temples dedicated to the false gods. I declare your offices vacated and your present duties forever ended. You will prepare to leave the city. My pharaoh, may I remind you that... If I were to exercise the power vested in the pharaoh, I would now condemn you to death. But you, who have plotted against the one god, a god opposed 
to violence and blood, a God of love and mercy, you will be the first in my court to receive the benefits of his teachings. The days go swiftly by, and if we're to strike, it should be soon. The gods have not deserted us, and the moment of our revenge is not far off. It's not enough to bid us wait, almighty Benedict. You must act now. I have spent the nights in communion with our gods, and the conclusion is a painful one, my brothers. Amenophis and the new religion must be ruthlessly destroyed. We must now offer ourselves for the preservation of our sacred beliefs. We have one great chance to rally the people to our cause. The day of penitence. Yes. The people will come to Thebes from all over Egypt for their annual petitions and prayers to the god Ammon. They still fear the ancient deities. It will be easy at that time to stir them to revolt against the sun god. The best of the Egyptian army is still in the desert. We should take advantage of their absence. I can pledge the support of all our men here in Thebes. Our day is marked, my brothers. We strike the blow for Ammon and our gods. And with their aid, victory is set. We must change our plans. What are you saying? The high priest is plotting to destroy Amenophis and seize the throne. Tonight I came face to face with its cold reality. I cannot, I cannot desert Amenophis now. And what of our love? That's not changed. I will always love you. But Amenophis is not well. He needs my support desperately. Safer is gone. He has no one else. But what can you do? It is not the first time that two people have been called upon to make the choice between love and duty. We must prove our love. And I, I must prove myself a queen, nothing less. Oh, Thomas, we must forget ourselves for the moment. I need your help. My help? Take the horses, burn the sands beneath their feet until you reach General Marib's army in the desert. Tell him his army is desperately needed here in Thebes. There's not a moment to spare. Go now, Tumus, quickly. At once. Please, please go. your report. Benekon is leading his troops in a march on the palace. Sound the general alarm! Call out the mountain guard!
Allard. No word from the desert yet. No word. Let us hope. My queen, I have distressing news. The pharaoh has locked himself in his chambers and refuses to see anybody. You must intercede, my queen. dangerous position, my queen. I respectfully suggest that you withdraw. Never. Do you speak for Amenophis? I speak for all those loyal to the Pharaoh, traitor. What do you want? We demand that Amenophis renounce the sun god and return to the gods of his people. And if the pharaoh chooses to stand mute? We insist upon an answer. If not... When the shadow of this lance crosses that line, we attack. I'm in office. I'm in office. Do you hear me? I'm in office. Benakon leads a march on the palace. Your throne is threatened. You must fight to save it. There's no intelligence in bloodshed. It offends the one true God, Eitan. Oh, please listen to me. I'm in office. Benakon has delivered an ultimatum. The length of a spear's shadow marks the moment of attack. Your generals need you. They need the light from the one god, Eitan. We all need it. Send for Saper, bring him to me. Saper? Yes, he will bring us a prayer from the heart of Eitan. I'm in office. Saper is dead. He was killed in the temple riots. Go. Tell him to come at once. Tell him I have a mandate from Eitan. To maintain the power of the throne so that his word may triumph. Come with me, Eminophis. Together we will stand before the people. When they see you, their mood will change. Come, Eminophis. They shall not prevail. Those foul gods battle for my soul. They still draw from limbo those putrid cadavers. I left on the field of battle and thrust them in my face. See them? My eyes closed. There. 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 <laughs> They're everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> What does the pharaoh say, my queen? The pharaoh has nothing to say. In the name of Ammon, attack! It has begun, and someone must take the command of the palace. depend on our own scant resources. The palace and the person of the pharaoh must be defended at all costs. <laughs>
People, I'm an office. If you have the courage. You must realize by now, my daughter that further resistance is senseless. You are outnumbered ten to one. What do you want of us? The immediate surrender of the palace and the life of Amenophis. I warn you, my daughter. And I remind you, subject, you are addressing the Queen of Egypt. You know that you are consigning everybody in this palace to certain death? Perhaps we prefer death to the rule of your priesthood. I've said enough. Consider your own safety. Leave the palace while you still have time. from the palace to a place of safety. But how, my queen? The palace is surrounded. I know a way. There's a passage from the royal gardens to the temple of Aton. Bring some guards for protection. last refuge. My queen, first I will defend you to the end, and then this sword will not give them the satisfaction of torturing the Pharaoh's general. No, Dakin, you speak of surrender, and we must never surrender to anyone or anything. <laughs>
So we come to the very end, my daughter. I offer you this last chance to save your life and perhaps your throne. Your demands come too late, Benacon. Take him! Queen is hostage for our safety. And now, Thomas, it is your finish. My father, if only your ambition had been to be a father when I needed you so much. To you, I owe my life and my throne. Both will be a great burden to me. Darn it. No. Nefertiti. Now you are Egypt. And we will remember the Tanit of yesterday. <laughs> 